So today's comment comes from Afro Educated. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. Um, their message to me was, Jiu Jitsu, after grappling for years and years, do you still feel like you're getting better? And that's a good question because um, I've been training for Gosh, it's been almost 20 years because I started grappling way back when I was a, uh, a kid in high school. I was wrestling in 2000, I think is when I started. And I started jiu-jitsu in 2003, and then now it's 2020. So again, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for 17 years, and I've been doing grappling in some form for about 20. And again, when you think about that, it can become really difficult to know whether or not you're getting better because I'm sure a lot of you guys experience this in your gym. The progress at which you gain is pretty slow. Like, it's not like every day you're getting no noticeable progress. It is a little bit in the beginning, but beyond that, it's very, very slow. There's a very similar parallel to lifting weights, right? Like when you first start lifting weights, the weights that you're able to lift, they climb very easily, right? So if you get under the bench and you can't bench press 225 yet, you'll find a lot of times that your weight really just quickly grows. And then it slows down to a halt. And then, you know, then you get to the point where you're getting ready to max out after six weeks of training and you're going to slap on maybe 10 extra pounds or whatever it might be. The same happens with your jiu-jitsu. It slows down dramatically from these big jumps that you used to have. But there's something that I do that tends to help me kind of stay motivated and to know whether or not I'm getting better at something. And I tell you guys to do this all the time on the channel, so again, I'll do it again. But I think it's really useful because it's what I do to this day and it's something that kind of gets me excited. So if you can have the discipline to do it, I think you'll you'll get the same. So this past month, if you're on my email newsletter, if you follow the videos that I've been doing with you, I've sort of encouraged you guys to do moves to your left side, your weak side, whatever that side might be, might be your right side. And in my gym, we've been focusing on the back mount. So that's what we've been doing this past month. And because of that, I wanted to get better at finishing with my left arm. So I can choke very efficiently with my right arm. I can do all the collar chokes, all the arm bar setups, all that stuff with my right arm as the dominant arm. Well, this kind of this past month, my goal for myself was I want to get better with my left arm as my finishing arm because it's weak. And so this past month, that's been my focus. And in the beginning of the month, it was very difficult. I <laughs> I wasn't getting much because I would be just a little bit too slow. You know, you go against a guy that's pretty tough, and I would get a little bit of a grip and they would defend it too quickly and there was a lot of thinking involved I wasn't it, it just wasn't autopilot it wasn't just coming you know super easily whereas with my right arm I don't even think about it it just happens on autopilot well by the end of the month now I've gotten to the point where my left arm is good because I sort of limited myself to choking and finishing only with my left well this past um, this past last two weeks now I've been able to quickly finish with my left arm been able to choke and that for me over this past month has shown me that I've gotten better because I went from the beginning of the month sort of fumbling around with my left arm trying to get the choke to now it's happening on autopilot. I'm not thinking about it too deeply and I'm able to submit some of my upper level students, right, black and brown belts with my left arm. That's an improvement. I know that I got better at that because I'm measuring it from, from one month to the next, right? Now here's the sort of the cautionary sort of thing to keep in mind with this is that when you judge you know, versus your training partners, if you can hit a move on them or not, it's helpful. It's a helpful sort of guide. But you have to also remember that they're going to get better. And I share this with you because, again, I've experienced this over the years where you know, I would use a particular move. Let's say it's an arm bar. I use an arm bar on John. Well, I hit the arm bar on John on Monday. By next Monday, I go against John, and now he's defending the arm bar. Now, a lot of us might have the sort of knee-jerk reaction to think, I got worse. My arm bar's getting worse. Why am I getting worse? It was working last Monday. What happened now? But you also have to remember that your training partners are going to get better too. And if you're attacking them with a technique, they're going to get better at defending it. This is one of the things where I experience where a lot of my purple belts are better than some of the black belts as far as against me. Like when I roll with them, they give me more trouble than some black belts do in competition. Now, the black belts are more skilled, and if I was to take that black belt and put them against my purple belt, the black belt would definitely win. But because the purple belt knows my game, they've gotten better at defending all of my techniques. Now again, it's all about the framing, right? So you could look at this situation as a bad thing, but if you're smart, you'll look at this as just another a hurdle to overcome or sort of a, a way to evolve your move. So um, a great example of one of my students who's doing this right now, if he's almost been, it's been about a year since he started on this sort of guillotine hunt, uh, my student Justin, he's been working on guillotines constantly, always guillotines, guillotines, guillotines. He started this because of an injury and he could go for the guillotine choke and now that he's healthy, he's still chasing after him. Well, initially, he was hitting guillotines left and right with, with no problem. 
Well, then people got wise to it. They knew it was coming, and so they started defending the guillotine. Then his guillotine sort of got stalled out. Well, he started doing some different setups, some different adjustments on the hand grips, and he started getting the guillotines again. And people are now defending him again, and this sort of thing continues. Another one of my students, Tim, he's really good at baseball chokes from the bottom. He'll get the gi grips and then spin you right into it. Well, when he started doing this years ago, it, nobody was really used to having a baseball choker in the gym, and so it was catching a lot of people. Well, then people got wise to it. They started breaking the grips off. So then he started setting up different traps and different adjustments to lure people in, and boom, he'd start hitting it. So again, you can kind of see that this is how it works. And this is why with your training partners that you have, your consistent training partners, you you have to, you know, again, it's the way that we judge ourselves. Did I hit my moves or not? That's a good idea, right? It's not a bad thing. But you just have to remember that when they're getting better too, don't look at it as a bad thing. Look at it as, okay, now I've got to overcome that. Now, going back to me, when I get to the point where my left arm is not working anymore because people get better at defending it, well, then I'm going to transition and figure out another option off of that. I might say, well, can I transition from the left to the right arm as a choking arm more quickly, and will that work? And again, evolve the position. And again, this is for all you guys that are you know somewhat newer, purple belt and, and below, this is how you develop your own systems and your own styles, right? You develop this ability to where you have these A, B, C, D sort of like chain combinations, and so, again, going back to your question, uh, your comment that you sent originally, you know, yeah, that, that's how I judge if I'm getting better or not, and that's how I know I'm getting better because I focus on my techniques. There's other things that I could measure, and there's other things I do measure whether or not I'm getting better, but just as a marker that could be useful to a lot of you guys, take a technique, take a position, take a submission, whatever it is, take that one thing and focus it on it for a month, and if you notice throughout the month that it improves and your ability to use it improves, and your sort of just muscle memory, the, the, the sort of the ability to do it without having to actively think about it, it improves, you're getting better at something and you can get motivated by that. You can get pumped up about that. And then again, you can switch it off to something else. And maybe some of you guys might think that would be boring to focus on one thing for a month, but think about it this way. What if by the end of the year, you could have 12 different techniques that you could use against an opponent of similar skill level effectively? That's pretty good. 12 techniques that you can use against someone at the same skill level, that's a game changing amount of techniques. So imagine if you took just one technique each month and you focused on just that one technique and you really built it up or one position or whatever it is and you built those things up over that course of that month. I think you'd be happy with the results that you get. But again, that's my encouragement to you guys. Again, I talk about this all the time in the videos because it's so useful to me. Focus a little bit for a month and see how it goes. And again, you can use that as a measure because it gives you some tangible evidence as to whether or not you're getting better. Because most of the time, you know, getting better in jiu-jitsu is a very ambiguous thing. It's really hard to judge. And that's a good way to give it some measurable means. So anyway starting to ramble, saying the same thing over again. Um, so Afro-educated, that's the, the answer to your comment. Thank you so much for it. And uh, guys, I'll talk to you next time.